Hey, what's up guys? So last year I did a tutorial on creating a blog post template design uh, using Generate Press and Generate Blocks. And I thought it was about time that I recorded an update uh, creating a new design uh, using the most updated version of Generate Blocks and Generate Press. So let's go ahead and redo it with a new design and the latest tools. Okay, so here's uh, my blog page and what we're gonna do is we've got some blog posts already set up in here and we wanna create a blog post template so that when I open this blog post, uh, it doesn't look like that, right? It doesn't look good, it's just a bunch of text, overlapping navigation, um, not laid out very nicely. So we're gonna go create a custom element within Generate Press Premium, which is gonna hold our content template for these blog posts. So let's jump over to our dashboard, go to appearance and elements. Oops. And we're going to add a new element and choose block. Hit create. And let's go ahead and name this, uh, say block, blog post template. And what we can do is essentially start designing. So. Um, I did do sort of a quick mock-up of what I wanted to achieve today with this tutorial um, within Figma and this is what we're going to aim for so it's kind of a this is mainly just the hero section to be clear um, we'll add in the body copy uh, you know the post content section below it um, but the hero I think is always um, the most complicated part of any blog post template so uh, this is what we're going to achieve today, or look to achieve at least, as close as we can get. Um, and so it's essentially a two column layout. You're, we're going to have our featured image here on the left. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have publish date. We're going to have the title. We're going to insert an excerpt of the post. And then we're going to enter the author. And like I said, below that, we'll also insert the um, post content. All right, so what we're going to do first is insert a container. And within this container, um, we do want the inner container to be able to contain the width of our content. So we're going to add an inner container. And within this, we're going to need two more containers. So we're going to use flex uh, and align these two containers 50% um, and insert our content that way. So we're going to add a container and I'm going to open up my dialog here so you can see. Uh, we can get rid of this paragraph. Um, so I've got the, inner con the most outer container, the inner container, and then now I've got the first one um, set up there. Now I'm gonna use Command-Shift-D and duplicate that for our second container. So this outer container, we're gonna say Display Flex, and then choose our two containers on the left, and also say Display Flex. We're gonna keep Row because we want them uh, side by side, and come down to the sizing and put 50%. All right, so we do want to insert some gap in between those. We're going to come out to our um, first container here and come down to column gap and let's put about 40 pixels. All right, so first in our left container here, we want to insert the image. So go ahead and choose the image block uh, from generate blocks and we can go ahead and insert a placeholder image here first. So we'll select it, and when you come down to the bottom, uh, we want to enable dynamic data because we want this to dynamically populate based on the featured image. So leave current post, and under image source, choose featured image. All right, perfect. So we're going to want to probably tweak some of those image sizes uh, later on, but for now we're going to go ahead and move on and leave that alone. Um, okay, so coming into the right-hand container, uh, looking at our design here, looks like we've got a date and headline. So we could probably go ahead and insert a headline block. And this is going to be um, dynamically populated again based on the date. So we're going to come down here on the right hand side, enable dynamic data once again, say current post and say post date. Now this, we just want to be a paragraph. Um, 
we're going to transform this to be uppercase. Uh, we would like, say, 0.05 on the letter spacing. Let's go font size, about 14 pixels. And let's see what else we want to do. Let's make this a uh, semi bold. And we also need to, if we look back at this, has an inline background color uh, wrapped around it. So in order to add that, we're gonna come to our colors, background, and let's choose a dark blue color here. So of course this is uh, stretching because of a certain flex setting that we have in place. So um, what we need to do is go ahead and Go to this container again. Um, so this container is actually set to flex row. We want to set that to column. And then, all right, we're going to say align items left. And now we can also go back in and change the text color to white so we can read it. And then padding, let's go five pixels on top. Oops, excuse me. I'm actually in the container. So we need to clear that out. I want to select my headline block, of course. Uh, choose the text color white. And in the padding, let's go five pixels, eight, five, eight. Oops, excuse me, did that backwards. I think I want to go down to like two pixels on top and bottom keep it a little bit tighter. It doesn't need to be exact, of course. Um, all right, so that's looking pretty good. Next, we wanna add a, another headline, and this is going to be our H1 because it's the blog post title. So if we come on down once again to enable dynamic data, current post, and content source, we'll say title. Font size, let's go ahead and bump this up even a little bit more, oops. Let's say 48 pixels or so. I think that looks pretty good. Font weight, I want this to be bold. I think that's what I use here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And for now, I think that's looking decent. So next, we're gonna enter yet another headline block. Choose paragraph. And now on the dynamic data for this one, we wanna say excerpt. Okay, now that we have the excerpt in place, um, you can ignore the default message there because it will be pulled in on the actual blog post once we take a look. So next, if we take a look at our Figma design, um, last we have the author name. So at the bottom, uh, if you actually notice, so there, I do have two lines separating here, the, the author um, name. So what I think I'm gonna do is probably go ahead and add a, another container so that I can control a top and bottom border, or you know what? We could actually just do that on the headline block itself. Um, so let's go ahead and insert a, another headline and say paragraph. And within this one, we're actually gonna use the dynamic options in the toolbar here. And so in this toolbar, we're gonna say post author name and we're going to say before text is by with the space. Um, so it'll say by Adam Wright or whatever your author name is. Uh, and then now we can go ahead and style this a little bit. So let's go to font size, say 12. Um, font weight, I think bold. Yep, I think bold looks pretty good. Um, and then now we can go ahead and add the borders on that and see how that looks. So we'll say two pixel border on top and two pixel border on bottom. So by adding the borders to the author name, uh, we can see now the border is not going all the way to the edge. That's due to the some flex settings that we have in place um, in order to make this in line with work. So what we need to do, I believe, is go ahead and set this headline item to flex and 
we can do a min width on this as 100%. Um, so by at all times that those lines are always going to be 100%. In fact, let me see if actually that will work without flex. And yeah, I think we actually don't even need to set it to flex. Um, if we just leave it at default and just put a min width of 100% uh, for that, it should work just fine. Uh, we'll find out later. So um, now we need to add some padding to that. I don't want it that close to those lines. So I'm going to do a 10 pixel top and bottom. That looks pretty good. I like that. And one thing we did not do is add this top border um, to the top of this container. So if we come to this container and we can go ahead and come to borders and put a two pixel border on top. And then now we need to add a little bit of padding there, of course. And let's add say uh, 20 pixels or so. That works. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, for the most part, that's what we wanted to go for. Um, we can go ahead and hit update, uh, publish, and we can come to our blog post and refresh it. Now, of course, it hasn't changed because we never changed the settings to it to, for it to display. Um, so what we need to do is go to element, and under element type, go to content template. And we need to change the editor width. Um, it always changes it when you do that to back to 100%. That's what we want it to be. And now location, we're going to choose the drop down and go down to posts. And it will be um, all posts. So now we can hit update uh, because we want those to this template to show on all blog posts. So hit update, come back to our post, and hit refresh. And it's definitely looking a lot better. Um, of course, the whole section is too far up, um, and all our content is missing below. But uh, overall, the design is there, and I'm definitely liking where it's going. So let's fix some of these things. We want to come to our outermost container, and go to our block settings, and add some padding. So um, on the top padding, we want to add probably at least 120 pixels. Um, and then let's say 60 pixels on bottom. Go ahead and hit update and just see um, how that looks now. Perfect. Uh, definitely a lot better. Of course, this is really, I used a very poor test site because my navigation is all white. Um, we can edit that so you can take a look at it, but um, quite honestly, we're just focusing on the blog post template anyways, um, so it's not as important. Um, all right, so coming back, so actually jump back here real quick. I noticed that our excerpt is shows a read more, and it's showing more copy than I really wanted to. So let's jump back into our headline that holds that excerpt, come down to the dynamic data, and we want to disable this default more link. Um, so that's that read more. We don't want them to show that. And excerpt length, let's go down to about 55 or so. Uh, let's hit update, hit refresh on our blog post. Um, still showing a little bit long, uh, but that read more text is gone, so that works pretty good for me. All right. So... Now that that is done, what we need to do is I really want the author name to always be stuck at the bottom of this featured image. Um, and actually, earlier I was saying I wanted to alter the featured image um, aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and tweak that and along with work on the settings so that this pushes down at the bottom of the image at all times. So let's select our featured image and come up to the width and height. Um, now, I really only want to touch the height. I think the width is perfectly fine. We want that to be 100%. So height, let's say, um, well, let's go down to about 400 pixels. And we need to say object fit to cover so that our image isn't stretched and look distorted. It'll um, make it fit to the, to the ratio that I've selected uh, proportionally. All right, and 
Uh, the last thing is trying to get this to go to the bottom. So we need to choose the container that holds that data. And on the min height, we're gonna say 100%. And on this last item that we want to push down to the bottom of the container, we're going to select it, come to the margin and say top margin auto. All right. Now you see it. As soon as I typed in auto, it jumped right down to the bottom of the container. So let's hit update and go take another look. Awesome. So that's did exactly what we wanted. Um, it moved the uh, headline down to the bottom of the image. Looks like there might be a little bit of padding there, uh, margin. Uh, yep, there is. So we can go ahead and zero out that margin, hit update once more, and now it'll be definitely right at the bottom there. Perfect, looks good. Okay, so now we need to insert the post uh, content, uh, which is obviously the body of our blog post. So I'm going to insert a new container below our hero. Again, insert a inner container. And in this inner container, um, I like to keep my blog post width to 800 pixels. So in the inner container, I'm going to come down to max width, undo the global setting, and I'm going to say 800 pixels. We can say add block. And if we put in here, um, if you type in generate, so there's two generate press blocks here. If you kind of click on the dynamic content and choose post content, um, that'll automatically put in the blog post content for us. So, uh, we can go ahead and hit update, refresh once again, and awesome. There's our blog post content. Uh, I think we need to add a little bit of spacing there, um, but overall, I mean, it's it's doing exactly what we want, so it's looking pretty good. So let's go to our outer container and let's add some 40 um, and let's say 60 on bottom. All right, awesome. So next we want to check out the responsive um, settings for this. We really want the template to look good on tablet and mobile. So let's jump into the customizer and take a look at it on mobile. And that looks awful, right? <laughs> Definitely not, not a pleasant experience um, by any means. So let's go back to our post uh, template and Let's select our container and come down to mobile. So if we're choosing the, not the outermost container, but the inner container uh, that's holding our two flex containers and under direction, we're going to choose column. Uh, so that's going to move our sections from being side by side to from top to top to bottom. And now the uh, containers still are pretty tight. They look like they're 50% width, right? Because that's what we had them on desktop. So we're going to go ahead and collapse these to select them both. And we're going to make those 100% width. Awesome. It's already looking a lot better for sure. Um, now this featured image, you can see because we set a 400 pixel height on desktop, it's pulling that through. That is way too high on mobile. So we're gonna say about 175 um, pixel height on mobile for that one. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. I think we need to probably lower the padding just a little bit between our header uh, hero and the post content. So let's hit update and go back and refresh our blog post page. Great, it's definitely um, looking better. Obviously now we can see we need some padding on the left and right. So let's come back to the template once again. And on the outermost container, 
we need to insert some 20 pixel left and right. And that'll fix that problem for us. Let's go ahead and refresh once more. Perfect, looking good. Um, and the last thing I noticed here, and actually I think that the, the featuring image could be slightly taller, so I'm gonna adjust that a little bit. Um, but the border, I don't actually want touching the bottom of that image here, this black border between the image and the date. Um, so let's go to our image real quick on make sure you're still on mobile. Let's go up to 200 pixels and then um, choose this container and we're gonna say row gap 20 pixels. So we'll go ahead and update. And now let's take a look at it on tablet. Uh, we can jump into our customizer once again, double check our settings. Yep, I think the featured image looks good, 200 pixels. Uh, and the date, title, excerpt, everything looks good. Oh, actually we didn't get the 20 pixel left and right in our content, so I'll fix that. Um, now, all right, on tablet. Um, I feel like the 50-50 layout like this could still work okay. We need to add some left and right padding, of course, um, on all the way across. And maybe tweak some of the font sizes, but I think for the most part, it's looking pretty decent. Um, all right, so go back to mobile real quick. I'm gonna add the padding left and right on the outer container of our content. Perfect. And all right, let's go to tablet. And you know, looking at this again, the aspect ratio of this image really doesn't suit it well for really any image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this uh, much like mobile and stack those from top to bottom instead of being 50-50. So we're gonna come back out to this second container and choose column once again. Um, we'll collapse these, choose them both, and go with 100%. Now the height on this image, I think we're gonna bring it down to say about 300 maybe, 325, should be okay. Um, come back to our container here, let's add that 20 pixel row gap, and come out to the outer container and also add our left and right padding as well. And let's do the same for our content container for the left and right padding and hit update. All right, so once again, mobile looking pretty good. We have our um, padding on the content now. And now let's take a look on tablet. That looks pretty good, I like that. Uh, I think the aspect ratio of the image works fine. Got our date, the title, excerpt, and the author. Let's take a look quickly at desktop as well. And it's looking pretty solid. So now we can actually um, come back to our site and go to our blogs. Of course, I got a search on my uh, imaginary navigation. <laughs> And let's visit another blog, take a look at it. Awesome, so this one's got a different image. We've got a YouTube video. Um, looking good, we can check out one more. Looks pretty great. All right guys, well I know that was kind of a lengthy video and we kind of ran into a couple hiccups uh, along the way. I always like to include those uh, to help you see me work through some of those struggles and diagnosing the problem. So I uh, hope this was useful and maybe give you an idea and inspiration for a new blog post template design. Uh, but nonetheless, this is uh, the, the really uh, powerful and easy way that you can use Generate Press Premium Elements paired with Generate Blocks to pull in dynamic content and create your own blog post templates. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.